thread keeps breaking. Two, unraveling threads. Three, replacing bobbins. Four, re-threading. Five, setting the tension. Six, tying off the threads in two different ways. Or, the dang thing just doesn't work. Yeah, I've had problems with this one in the past, but I easily fixed it, and I'm gonna show you them areas. But first, let's go ahead and put some batteries in it and sew some different fabrics. Come on, everybody, let's do this. Your handheld sewing machine is not going to come with any batteries. So, first thing you need to do is put the safety switch on underneath the power switch. Next, open this up and put the batteries in. Follow the directions. The directions are right inside. Close this up. Snaps close. Safety switch is off and you're ready to sew. If your handheld sewing machine does not come with this uh, sample piece of material here, that means it was not pre-tested. Let that sew out about three inches, cutting it off at about an inch, and leaving you a couple inches outside. Safety switch on when it's not in use. Next, let's go ahead and start sewing some fabrics. What I have is a lightweight fleece, a lightweight canvas, and a lightweight canvas with a marine boat vinyl. So that's, it gets thicker as you can see. And when you turn this, you want to make sure that the arm of the needle is up to the highest point. Okay? And safety switch is always on when it's not in use. And this is called a presser foot. Okay? So your material goes underneath this spring. So let's start out with the lightweight fleece. top stitch looks good we'll turn it over and the underside stitch looks like a nice chain stitch all the way until the end okay that's a lightweight fleece again safety switch turn this up to the highest point now you want to make sure that safety switch is on because I have pinched my fingers underneath that before and it is not a nice feeling at all I can tell you that right now so let's go ahead and take two layers of lightweight canvas Put it underneath the presser foot, underneath the needle. Safety switch is off, and let's see what happens. And that chain stitch, let it go, cut it off at about an inch beyond. And you can see a nice stitch on top of this lightweight canvas, and turn it over, and there's the chain stitch underneath. Again, that's a heavier material. So let's just step it up even more. I'm going to push this little tiny handheld sewing machine uh, that was sent to me. To the limit here okay so now I'm going to take again a the lightweight canvas with a marine boat vinyl and if you understand marine boat vinyl that is a very thick material that is used on boat seats again safety first I almost forgot press her foot cutting that stretch out about three inches cutting that off an inch beyond all the way across wow it went through that marine boat vinyl and canvas just great and now what I'm going to do is show you how to change out the bobbin and rethread this and it's very important to know that when you purchase your handheld sewing machine it comes with different colored bobbins because the first thing you're going to have to figure out is well, how you're going to rethread your bobbins if you do not have a regular sewing machine to rethread it so having extra colored bobbins just like this one is offered uh, through that Amazon site located below this video. Uh, it comes with different colored bobbins, also comes with some nice scissor snips and uh, a flex measuring tape, uh, extension arm, two extra needles, and two threaders. So mine didn't come with that. I paid $12.99 for mine and it only came with two white bobbins and an extra needle and a threader, an extension arm. It really came with not much at all. So the first thing you have to do is pull off this bobbin. There's a little plastic piece. Just go ahead and pull that thread right on out of there and set that off to the side right here. There's a little spring right here. Do not lose that. Okay, set that aside. Now the next thing is we're going to just choose a color. So let's go ahead and choose this light blue right here. Again, uh, take that plastic piece and push it right through the hole. Now some people may ask, should I top feed or should I bottom feed? I top feed, okay? The instructions say bottom feed, which means feed from the bottom. I feed from the top, okay? And also, uh, when it comes to putting it through this little plastic piece, here, here goes my spring. I'm putting that on. And I'm simply just pushing this on, but I'm not pushing very hard, okay? Look at that little spring. It just gives it a little bit of flex right there. I'm going to 
top feed this, meaning I'm going to go down the plastic into a little plastic hole right here. So feed downward, and that gives it a little bit of tension. That does help for a nice tight stitch. These are tension discs. We want that, that thread to go through the tension disc right here. Okay, that's a tension dial. It also is going to be helpful if you have a pair of tweezers. Okay, these tweezers are going to help you put that inside a little tiny hook located on the underside, and then you're going to pull that through like so. Inside your little kit, you are going to get a threader, and it's got a little tiny hook on the very end of it, right here, and that, that points downward, and you are going to put that through the very front needle, just like so, like that, okay? And then take your tweezers, grab the thread, and make it go underneath that little hook, and just simply, as you can see, just pull that thread right through the hole, just like that, okay? And then let that run down on the outside here, on the side of the bobbin, about two inches, and then cut that off with your snips that you get in the kit. Okay, you are ready to sew. Cut that off about an inch again. There is a nice light blue thread. Turn it over and there is a nice chain stitch right there. Okay, very good. So now, let's go ahead and set the needle. Replacing the needle or resetting the needle. You can have skip stitches or no stitches at all if your needle is slowly working its way up or slowly working its way down. How does it do that? Is that this tension screw becomes loose. It takes a Phillips head screwdriver and all you do is you turn that counterclockwise, okay, to loosen that, to loosen that up. Make sure that your safety switch is on. Underneath is two little teeth right here. You want to push the two little teeth and then that cover slowly comes out just like that. If you do have thread inside your needle, it'd probably be a good time to take that thread out of there using your tweezers or simply just pull it out with your fingers. Now, your tension screw is loose. So let's go ahead and let's just take the needle out as if we, we didn't even have the needle in there. So I'm going to raise that up to the highest point. I'm going to take these scissors and push that on the underside like so. And the needle just popped right out, just like that. Now, you will notice these needles have flat sides to it. Okay, So the flat side of the needle is the part that faces outward. It is a flat from here to here. Okay right here all the way down. It's hard to see. And then also there's a flat right at the very top of the head of the needle. Uh, and that's where the tension screw will bind down on that. And that's very important so you don't turn that backwards. You'll have skip stitches or no stitches at all. So we simply put that back in and this is important. You want to push that head down so you barely feel it. You want to still feel it. Okay? Barely. And that's very important. You don't want to push it down with your nail, and you don't want it to be too high, but you do want to be able to feel the head. And then all you do is take your Phillips screwdriver and tighten that up by turning clockwise. And don't turn that so hard that you strip that out. It will stop. So once it stops, that's it. You don't have to tighten it anymore. And all you do is you take this the little teeth snaps right back in just like that and all you have to do is re-thread it just like we did before. Now let's go ahead and talk about some troubleshooting areas. If your handheld sewing machine is skipping stitches the first thing that you might want to check is your tension and this is a tension disc right here. There's really not that much tension that runs through here but it does help for you to tighten this down by turning it clockwise and it tightens the tension. You're going to want to use practice material always before you start stitching with your actual material okay, wound up so that can cause this to not uh, turn so easily. Also, if you lose your little spring or you put your spring on this side, that can cause tension and that can cause skip stitches or no stitches at all. If this thread does not go on the underside where that hook is, that can cause skip stitches and no stitches at all. If your thread keeps breaking, okay, that's a good one. If the thread keeps breaking, it could be because of the needle. Again, check check again the needle is always number one number two the thread could be breaking because there's just too much tension 
and that'll cause the thread to constantly break. Also, if you're using too light of a material, the material can get pushed down into the lower part of the sewing machine, the handheld sewing machine, so that's also critical. If your handheld sewing machine is pulling your threads when you sew, there are two things that can happen. One, you need to recheck your needle, make sure it's at the proper settings. The second thing could be either the tension is too tight here at the bobbin or the tension is too tight here at the dial. Either one of those things. If you have too much tension, it's almost like a guitar string. And what's happening is that when your needle goes down, that lower catch cannot catch that thread because it's so tight against that needle and it cannot pull it to make that loop. So you might want to check your tension and your needle. Now, let me show you guys how to tie off your threads when you're done sewing. If you're going to have a stitch that's not going to be seen, simply let the chain stitch go beyond about an inch, and that will hold just like that. If I pulled on this thread, it would just pull out. This is what happens. It simply just pulls right off as if it didn't even happen. Yeah, that's not good. That's a waste of time. So I'm going to grab with my threader the hook and I'm going to pull that thread right through to the opposite side, just like that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, some people will just leave that just like that and that's not what you want to do. You want to curl this under like so, just like that. You want that to turn under just like that and make a loop and you're going to take your threader and you're going to grab that and pull that underneath that other loop and tie that off just like that and pull outward. Done. Okay, now there are times that people have sent in comments and said, the dang thing just isn't working. Okay, number one, obviously, we're going to check the batteries and make sure that you put the batteries in correctly. If it is not that, Okay, uh, you're going to take your Phillips head screwdriver and now you're going to, if you got any type of mechanical skills, you're going to take this screw out and these screws here, once you take the batteries out of course, and this cover will just simply just come off. Now you can see here there are four spots where these solders, uh, where the wire solders in can become disconnected. Them solders can easily just break off or the vibration from the handheld sewing machine just working can break the solders. So if you are handy and you can fix that, well then you can fix that. And, and I have a soldering machine so I have fixed mine, uh, this exact one before in the past because uh, one of the solders broke off because I kept dropping it on the floor. And just like that, Troubleshooting 101. I hope this video helped you guys out. Remember, when it comes down to the handheld sewing machine, it's pretty much about the tension and the needle. As long as you make sure that the needle is in the right place,